Howdy, how's it going? Welcome back, or howdy if you're new. Well, I finally am going to present to you the thing that I have been teasing for so long, and it is the world's first water-cooled ROG ally. Now, I know this got a ton of attention, it got a ton of hate, it got a ton of love, but I'm going to address everything. I'm going to tell you how this mod was done, who this mod is for, and why it is not pointless. And I'm also going to show you how I was able to achieve record-breaking benchmarks, record-breaking temperatures, and then some. It will be a more long-winded video. I don't know if I can compress everything as quickly as some people would like, but I do appreciate your patience. I appreciate your attention span. And without further ado, let's just dive right on in. Thank you to the channel members for making this happen. You guys are the GOAT. You are the OG. You guys are the reason that I keep doing these mods because you enjoy them as well as everyone else in the community. We are modders. We mod everything. Hide your Steam Deck. Hide your Ally. Hide your Lead you Go. We mod and everything. That was corny. All right, this is the world's first true direct eye water-cooled ROG Ally. Now, how I did this is I did use a Southbridge water block, the Southbridge on a PC motherboard. Very old school water block. It's a universal design. Some trimming can be done to make it fit a little better. Uh, but it's not necessary, but I would totally recommend cutting off the corners of this. As far as screws go, I'll link some screw kits below, but essentially the thread pitch is the exact same as the backplate screws. Only two screws are gonna hold this thing on, so it's completely fine. There's more than enough mounting pressure. I have no issues with it at all. It doesn't move around. Some backplate trimming and everything is you know, definitely needed, but it's a very easy, straightforward installation. You can even remove the fans and put on some little heat sinks like you see inside of here, and the backplate removes pretty easily. You can see some of the heat sinks I have over the RAM. And I am using the 2230 drive. I wanted to use my 2280 drives, but they just simply will not fit. And that is the only main caveat, I would say. Now there's a ton of different variants you can do with this. You can make this into a much smaller package using like a 120 millimeter NZXT AIO where it's got the pump inside of the radiator and just run your tubes to the end and out on the block. Easy peasy. There's also a few other ways you could cool this if you didn't want to remove the stock heat pipe. You actually could buy one of these NVMe water blocks because there is a channel inside of here and it does seem to kind of disrupt the flow a little bit and distribute the cooling more. Um, and it's probably not very scientific, but you get the point. You would need some clay like thermal putty pads to lay over the heat pipe and it'll squish down like so. You'll need to fabricate a bracket. I might do this. I just haven't had the time yet, but you know, I'm not running the heat pipe at all. This heat pipe is quite thin. It does do a decent job. This mod, as you already know, is completely unnecessary, but you're going to see why I did it. Now, the next thing I think is going to be more towards the reasoning behind this is there's a lot of people who just don't have a laptop or a desktop and maybe they have other handhelds now. Maybe maybe they're buying a new Legion Go and this is just kind of sitting by the wayside and they'd rather take their Legion Go everywhere. Well, this would be a perfect mod for you desktop users because if you look on Reddit and a lot of other places, there's a ton of people that actually use their Ally as their entire desktop setup. It's a very powerful computer. There's nothing wrong with that. But the only problem is those long gaming sessions and when you're plugged into power, you're pushing this thing to its limits and and it is going to hit that 90, 95 degrees Celsius um, temperature range on certain games, certain benchmarks, certain power loads. And then you'll quickly know that, yeah, you can you can put it at 10 watts. Duh. But you probably don't want to do that. You paid for all the power, and I'm going to show you how to unlock its full potential. I was able to put this thing in at 60 watts. I don't really know if it's pulling that full 60 watts or not, but... I, I think the sweet spot is like about 54 watts and I was even able to break some benchmark records of my own as well as the world. The, literally, if you look up the ROG Ally benchmarks for Cinebench, 
I, I guarantee you no one has even come close. I'll toss it up here on screen now. 16,555 or either 16,655, whatever. I, I, I can't read. So that right there is, is proof in and of itself just quickly that a synthetic load will strongly benefit from lower temperatures and being able to push some more power. Okay, I get it. You're already saying, yeah, but no one cares about synthetic benchmarks. Okay, well, I get that too. So now let's toss up Modern Warfare 3. Well, hmm, how do you like those numbers? And I'm able to get in game actually about 110 to 120 FPS and that's natively on the screen. Bear with me time wise, I'm trying to go as fast as I can, but it's really difficult for me, but I digress. So you're looking at the benchmark at the Modern Warfare and you're looking at those temps, 29 degrees. It's like, what, what is even going on? Yeah, it really is running that cool. I'm able to game around 30 degrees Celsius, everything to the max, no handicaps, no CPU boost off, no uh, limiting the power. No, you don't have to do that on these devices if they're properly cooled. Did the manufacturer cool these properly? Yeah, of course, that's fine. You can run these at 95 degrees. There's really not a huge performance advantage um, unless you start pushing more power. And I might do a more deeper dive on how I achieve this, what apps I use, like I tested out Handheld Companion, I also tested out x86 Tuning Utility, and using those apps you are able to um, combine them with using Smokeless BIOS and pulling more power that way. There's a whole process to it. There's a lot of guides and tutorials on using Smokeless and using these programs people that do a lot better job than I. I am a hardware guy. I like to tinker, I like to fafo. So that's just what I do. When it comes to benchmarks and the technicals of stuff, I leave that to my other brethren and you could definitely check them out. But I'm gonna just show you the hardware portion of it, give you the ideas, give you the inspiration and tell you what I found to be the best. And this seems to be the best thermal solution possible that I could find under the sun. Now all this was built with spare parts. I didn't spend a dime on anything except the water blocks. So if you hate in the comments saying, oh, all that money spent to just get, you know, a thousand points higher in Cinebitch, ha ha ha, what a clown. Well, you know what, I don't care. It was fun. I didn't spend a dime except the water block, 15 bucks. So this is a FLT240. Completely overkill, completely expensive, but it is housing a D5 pump. Like I said, a 120 millimeter AIO would be perfectly sufficient for all of this, and I might test it later. But this is a 240 millimeter Corsair radiator, and I am running some Lee and Lee Uni fans on the back. Completely overkill, completely unnecessary, but like I said, it's all spare parts. So before you get triggered in the comments of how much money I spent, I didn't spend a dime. This is stuff that was literally just sitting collecting dust. It's a used reservoir, heavily used. So the tubing you can make longer, you can make shorter. You can actually print out a 3D printed housing if you want and smoosh this all together and make it a much more uh, portable design. You can even use something like this Ugreen power bank and power the pump and power everything from it and really make this thing portable if you wanted to nerd out. But I wanna quickly go over a few other things and potential caveats. So now you're wondering, how am I getting power to everything? Well, let me tell you, the D5 and these fans, they all run on a 12 volt signal, which is pretty easy to tackle if you're a tech person like me. So first thoughts were a power supply for a computer. I could run it to my desktop, but then I thought, well, not everybody's gonna have access to that and they can be quite expensive. So what does a tech person do? Well, they reach in their tech drawer of junk and typically you'll have a broken modem in there from 15 years ago and you could dig out this old AT&T power supply, which is 12 volts, three amps, goes up to 36 watts. That is perfect. That's Pretty much overkill for what we need here but you know it doesn't get hot it's not going to overheat perfectly fine however if you don't have one of these i have heard of some usb-c adapters that should be able to output a 12 volt signal 
and you could power these off of that especially if you're going to do the nzxt 120 millimeter mod because it'll have a much weaker pump and i do believe that one still should operate off of a 12 volt signal correct me if i'm wrong in the comments if you want to slim things down a little further you can get a smaller dock like one of these u-greens you could even power it off of one of these u-green exode x chargers this is stuff that I've already shown on videos before, not sponsored in this video, but I just wanted to show you that would be my recommendations for a safe and reliable power source. These, eh, I'd say you could probably pick these up for a couple bucks on eBay or Amazon, and I would have no problems using these at all. And you could just sleeve your cables, tuck them back here, and nobody will be the wiser. So that would be the quick and easy way to do it. And as far as the RGB, we talked about that. You could get a USB controller, plug it into your hub, and wire it that way as well. There's a ton of possibilities with it. We will explore this in a part two video. So if you have questions or you want to know a solution, either drop it in the comments or jump in the Discord and tag me. I'll be super happy to answer it. And I think I'm going to go ahead and order one of those 120 millimeter AIOs if enough people comment and let me know that's something they want to see. So... That's for power and RGB, and here's the rest of the video. Let's say you do want to unplug this and use it without the tubes. It's possible. You can actually unplug this. You can use some quick detach fittings on the back and have it to where you could just plug it up when you're docked. Yeah, completely doable, especially if you're just going to be browsing the web, watching some YouTube, doing normal everyday tasks. But as soon as you start gaming or doing anything other than that, it's just gonna to be too much power uh, for this little thing to cool. I was able to keep the temps around 70 to 80 degrees just sitting, you know, doing desktop things without water being flowing through the water block. So there is the downside to that is you'll always need to have this pump running, but I think better water blocks could be made and designed since the top of this is just like the Alcatel material. It's not actually metal on the top. So if you were able to get a bigger block made or designed, it would definitely help. You could also use these Peltier coolers. I love these things, by the way. I've actually been experimenting with these more and more and more. I've actually got one on my camera right now because my 4K camera, it, it, it'll overheat. Like for real, after about 20 minutes, it'll overheat doing 4K. But I have one of these on the back plate or on the back, uh, it, it works it just works really well so the problem with this is if you're using it on just a normal ally it doesn't do you a ton of good and cooling plastic doesn't also do you a ton of good so what you would really need to find a way to do is kind of like how some of the steam deck plates had i believe on the jsox case where the metal actually was on the outside so you could attach that to here and it would give you a more direct cooling effect now, using the thermal pad situation that they have, they have uh, given you with the handheld DIY plate, it does work, but it, I think we can make that better. And what I was going to experiment with is getting a block of aluminum or a block of copper and trying to actually bridge the gap between the back of the heat sink and the back of this plate here. That way we would have a much more efficient thermal transfer, if you will. So you can use a Peltier cooler to drop these temps. The other downside of the Peltier coolers is they do, they do produce some condensation. They do sweat. It's like a little refrigeration device. So the water cooling mod, it's crazy. It's not ideal. It's not needed. It's not necessary, but it's totally cool. It was totally fun. I had a lot of fun doing this mod. You can get about 30 to 35 degrees in most games, most benchmarks. You can lock those clocks on the GPU. You can lock those clocks on the CPU and it won't budge. You can hit 2.7 gigahertz on the GPU and just lock it, completely lock it. You won't dither below that at all. You can get this thing running nonstop and not thermally throttle, not hit any type of VRM temperature limit. This thing is just a powerhouse when it's cooled properly. There is potential to squeeze even more power out of it as far as BIOS tuning and all the options that you have in the smokeless BIOS. So if you are a person that likes to FAFO with BIOS settings and 
APU tuning and you've been thermally limited before, this is the way. And like I said, you'll need those screws from a kit or your backplate screws, but it gets a little sketchy because if you go too long, you're going to pierce through the screen. If you go too short, you're not going to have enough mounting pressure, if any at all. And you want to make sure you're going to be able to use some washers because those screw heads can go straight through here. I used a Dremel tool and I lopped off the edges. I cut the back plate, I clearanced it as you saw earlier. So you will be able to still put a back plate on, but you will lose, you know, a little hole here, of course, duh. But overall, it's pretty good. And you can still use it in, in its handheld form, you know, with the tubes extended. You can still use this thing. You don't have to have it docked. You know, you, you will be tethered to this freaking water cooling nonsense for the rest of its life unless you go back stock. But you can do that. You can go back stock if you want. Completely fine. It's your prerogative. Now, the other thing we'll talk about is these little joysticks here that have probably been bothering you because one's black, one's clear. Well, I just 3D printed that, slapped it on. I did it out of PETG. Works really well, looks really cool. I'm gonna swap the other one. 3D printed buttons, you know, if you follow my channel for any length of time, you probably know. But I'm gonna tell you, the quickest place to get information is definitely just stay in the Discord. There's so many people in the comments who will spread hate, spread FUD, who will make fun of you for modding. Don't let those people steal your sunshine. You mod your device to how you see fit that makes you happy and that gives you the performance or the temperatures that you're looking for because everyone has different needs. Not everyone needs to run this thing at 30 watts and let it boost up to 53. Not everyone plays competitive first person shooters. Not everyone plays demanding titles. Some people play solitaire on their device at 10 watts and they like slideshows and that's fun. If five FPS is cool for you, 10 FPS, 30 FPS, whatever i don't care if it if it's if it's fitting for you then enjoy it and love it but don't poo poo on those who want to push their device to its limit it's no different than people who modify cars there's people who take their car to the drag strip and they put new intakes on it they put exhaust on it they they make their car faster and make it fun and then they're like, well, you could have just bought a track hawk. You could have just bought a Hellcat. Well, Thomas, I didn't have the money for a Hellcat at the time, but I got a few extra bucks in my pocket, so I might as well make the best of it there, huh? That's basically the same with devices. You may not have all the money to go buy a top tier device today or tomorrow. You may want to just find a way to make it better. This is what it's all about. I will really try to get some more concise benchmarks out. I really will. It's just very difficult for me to put together slideshows and edit these things out. I'm better with talking. I'm better with demonstrating and I enjoy it. I really enjoy using my hands, working with stuff and giving my feedback on how well it worked. I, I enjoy being an advisor. I enjoy being a tinkerer. That's just my passion in life and trying to inspire people to do the same. Not everyone wants to live inside the box and color with the crayons you only that you're given, you know, those four colors you got to keep in the box. No. Color off the page. Rip the page out, fold it up, make origami. Color little eyes and dots on that origami. You have fun. You don't let anyone steal your joy away. And there are a ton of those fun suckers out here who will love to spread hate. And it's because they don't simply have the skills needed to do a lot of this stuff or they think their skills with limiting their device down to 10 watts is good enough for them and it should be good enough for you. If you enjoyed this video, definitely leave a like. Please subscribe if you can. Please comment for sure. Let me know what you think. So I hope all of you guys are out there having fun. I hope this inspired you and I hope all of you guys have a good afternoon, good evening, or good night.